He was an architecture student who turned to art. And for his master's degree at Malmo Art Academy, he made in 2000 a film entitled Horizontal Sliding. I saw it a couple of years later in Stockholm, quite by accident. A camera tracked horizontally through walls and empty rooms, or so it seemed. And it was absolutely mesmerizing. I had no idea how it was done. Later I learned that a centrally placed rotating camera tracked the inside of a model that he had built and built to a circular plan. So it was just a rotating camera within a model. And it had quite astonishing effects. Um, the, the visual and psychological impact was far beyond what this deep description can, can convey, really. Um, I then saw a piece he made in 2004 called Invisible Cities. And here, a camera that appeared to be tracking through a city. <coughs> there was something intangibly strange about it. What, I won't tell you because I'm going to show it to you. Jonas spoke about these works and others when I invited him to this series in its very first year, which was 2004. I very much hope he will show you, well, I've just learned he will show you Invisible Cities today. He went on to film a lot of things, including rooms as they melted. And that's, you haven't misheard, melting rooms. Um, I think I can tell them because you're not going to use it. They no, you broke them out of wax and for, you, for minutes, which be, felt like hours, nothing happened. And then there were some slight shifts and by the end, there was absolutely nothing but on the floor, uh, melted wax. Uh, he designed an opera set for the Grand Theatre Theater. And all these, of course, are staged situations. Though with the opera, it wasn't filmed. His latest work, Imagined Cities, shown last year in Stockholm, was a temporary staging around an old, disused post office building. Unlike most of his earlier work, it isn't a filmed piece. It uses an archive of memories of cinematic spaces, and it uses the, uh, the audience. He will speak about this tonight. Of course, there was much more between invisible cities and imagined cities. I just want to note, I'm not going to tell you all the places he's exhibited in and so on. You can find out on the web. Uh, uh, I want to note that Jonas is the only artist uh, that I have invited back for a second time in this series. As I've already said, he spoke in the very first year, and I think it is fitting that he should, it should be he who is the last speaker in what is probably the last year of this series, which has given me much pleasure to organize over the last nine years. Please welcome Jones. Thank you so much for the nice introduction and for inviting me here again. Uh, I will uh, talk about or and show a few of my works that uh, in one way or another deals with architecture, invisible, imagined, secret and psychological architecture. Architecture addressed as a political place that uh, influence how we understand ourselves and how the body and mind experience the outside world. Uh, I, I will start with a, with a work that, that Parveen introduced or mentioned here in the end called An Imagined City. This is a piece which, where I was asked uh, to produce like a site-specific work for a, for a public space in Stockholm. Uh, the site was a building that used to be a, a, a post office and now it was going to be rebuilt 
to be uh, luxury apartments and an additional rooftop penthouse made by John Pawson. Uh, my point of departure was a building that I had no relation to and a place that I rarely visit, visited. I ex explored the building and its history and, and space several times over a long period, felt my way around it and tested ideas. I went back and forth to this place and I really didn't get any, any sort of closer to what I could do. It's like I, I was standing and, and uh, or it never really happened any, anything for me. It started to irritate me basically and I was, I was uh, simply not making any progress with the, with the work. And, and uh, during this time I was, I was having some people in my studio and we worked on, on, on an opera set. And one of them, I guess, was starting to be quietly bored of me when I was irritated in the studio. So she, he told me about a new text message ser service, service that have started where, you, where uh, you were allowed to ask one, you can send them a, a message and ask any question at all. And you got one free, you got one free uh, question Otherwise, it costed like a pound or something. And since I'm cheap, I thought about that I should uh, use this, uh, my free question, and, and uh, see if they could solve my problem with this house. So I, I wrote to them, uh, on my way to, to and from work, I pass a building that really irritates me, and I want to make it disappear. Can you please tell me what to do? And this is the answer. You are telling us that you walk this way every day to and from work. So we think that you know, yeah, you see. <laughs> and it's brilliant. <laughs> so I thought that, that this is, of course, what I should do for, for the viewer. This is, I should, I should give them the possibility to close their eyes. So I cover the building with, with a, 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 a black fabric and make the building disappear. Uh, normally, so it becomes like this was made, as you see, is in the, in the winter time in Sweden. And uh, it gets quite dark already at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So then the buildings start to disappear, basically. And, and normally when you renovate the building, uh, most of the time people don't care so much. As long as the facade looks the same in the end, you can do whatever you want with the, with the, with the sort of the functions inside. The, you can change a public building to become private luxury apartment. You can, you can do a lot of things, but it never raises the attention of or becomes like a public debate about the renovation or what's going on or the change of the building or the program of the building. But if something disappears, if you, if you uh, give the, the people passing by the idea that the building is gone, that it has been teared down, then suddenly people start to think about what have happened. They start to think about architecture, they start to think about what a city could be, or what, what, what it was there before. And, and, and so this black hole becomes some, some sort of projection for, for ideas about the city. Uh, and, and you start to, to think about uh, sort of all kinds of, of, of spaces that, that you have in your memory. Uh, and I started to think more and more about what I should do with this black hole. If it was enough to just give the viewer this, this hole of, 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 uh, of uh, or, or this idea about that they could go by and project this or in, into this black, black hole. And I started to, to, to think about if I wanted to do something or I started to work with, a, with, this, with an archive of memories. I wanted to deal with people's ideas about the city. 
and and I, I wanted to somehow deal with a with with uh, what you say almost like an archetypical memory that something that we share. So I, I wrote I wrote to to a lot of people. I sent out an email where I asked them to to tell me tell me. Uh, uh, basically, I, I asked them to, to write me back and tell me about uh, memories from films, but not, not, uh, not the na narrative, not, uh, not anything to do with the film. I asked them to, to tell me memories of architecture and spaces and locations from films and try to describe the spaces. And what's what's interesting with 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 when you ask someone to describe describe a space or, or or a location from a film is that you start to fill in with your own stories. It starts to become like so one part of the memory that you you remember is is actual a film space, and the big part of you what you start to tell or when you write the stories is is that you fill in from your own own history, spaces that you have been to, spaces where you grew up, spaces where you live today. So it's, it becomes very layered, these memories, but between the personal and private and some sort of, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, shared, shared city. I got in. I remember a city which made me think of it. I got in like uh, around 500 of these memories and here is an, now it's unfortunately not possible to see here but but uh, it's some sort of what you say some sort of uh, archive of these or, or index of these memories where you see the different films and and or different spaces and then or different kind of spaces and then you see uh, all the films that that uh, use for a, for example a living room or all the films that use a, a, a corridor and, and so on so of course I get in a lot of, of memories which are are I got in probably eight or nine describing the corridors in the shining and so on we can listen on I, I will afterwards I, I I recorded these memories between the walls the asphalt turned blue and white in the light from the street lights. It was dark and it must have been some time between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. Now and then there was a certain quiet sound of some sort of calling. The building was long and had some kind of dim yellow color all over it, but it may also have been the light from the aisles inside the building. I remember the narrowness of the street a certain slope, a hill that was not too steep, a kind of sharp light conditions. The houses were narrow and a bit high, but not too high. They seemed friendly and were typically French. And I remember the flight of the red balloon over the city. I only remember a street intersection in a big city. It was completely empty of people. It was either very early in the morning or early in the evening, sometime between people's work and restaurant visits. The streets were empty, but the sun was strong and fell at a slight angle, I think. The sun must have been setting or rising. The intersection was large. Perhaps there were two lane streets. As I recall, it was as if you were being lifted higher and higher up from the intersection. Possibly I've added it myself afterwards in memory, but I think you also turned a little and sort of tried out different angles. The buildings cast long, sharp shadows. Apart from that, the intersection bathed in sunlight. I remember a shop, a spacious, bright room with lots of windows. It was full of pianos and grand pianos for sale. The shop was on the ground floor. The ceiling felt low and it was distressing with all the unused pianos in such a large room. Outside the windows, the small town obtruded itself into the space. 
I remember a staircase with soap bubbles floating through the air above. As you see here, I, I decided to, from, from in my work, in all the work I've done, I, I normally take a starting point from, from some sort of generic space or some very often cinematic spaces. So the viewer in my films are normally recognizing the space a little bit which I'm showing, but they can't really place where they have seen it. And, and in this case, I, instead of, of, of using my own memories of, of, of cinematic spaces, which I layered with my own history of, of my own spaces, I asked people to, to, to give them my, their own spaces to me. I recorded them, and then I decided to, to, to use one of my space again. Uh, and it's, it's, and I, I lighted up these two windows. And, and the inspiration comes from, from The Third Man by Orson Welles. Well, it's a scene there when, when he is, uh, or when, when the Holly Martins, I think the name is, is looking for, for or wa wandering around in the, in the nighttime in, in, uh, on the city streets in Vienna. And, and uh, he, he sees that, that he sees, I think it's like a, cat or something that stops and, and, and stands outside a gate of, of a stone house. And, and he sees the, shining sh uh, the shiny shoes of, 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 uh, of some person who stands in, in this gate. And he starts to, 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 to scream to the person, show yourself, uh, why, why are you hiding there? And when he does that, uh, an old woman uh, wakes up in one of the apartments above and and uh, and turns on the light in in her apartment and open the windows to to shout down to them to to sort of shut up it's in the middle of the night and when she opens the windows the light shines down to the gate and and shows the man which is then uh, I don't remember the the name of the cab but it's Orson Welles which is supposed to be dead and and so I used this idea about of this of this sort of of of, of these spotlights, the these windows becoming a spotlight that shines uh, shines down on the streets. And in the windows, I have directional speakers. So so when you walk into when you walk into the light, which you see down to the left in the image, you also walk into the sound. So you hear these stories, which means that when, when you walk into, you, you, you have like, I think it's called ultrasound, so it's really directional speakers, it's like uh, sound spotlights. And, and so you don't hear anything at all outside. You walk, the ideal situation is you come walking by this space in the maybe at like 12 in the night or something like that, you're alone on the streets, you see these lamps, or these uh, these two windows, quite quite sort of abstract windows, and it's almost like a a, a scene in itself, or a, it's like a film film scene in itself. Maybe someone is standing in the light and lis uh, in the light and listening, but you don't really know what they are standing in the light because you don't hear the sound before you enter and walk into to the light yourself and, and maybe stop for a while. And then you become part of the film scene also when you're standing in the light. So it's quite, what you say, dramat dramatized uh, architecture in a city. The idea from the beginning, which I had also when I, I wanted to deal with, with this, to do something in a city, in uh, like a site-specific work in, a, in, 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 uh, in this situation was that normally, in, at least in Sweden, it's quite tricky to build things or it's quite tricky to get allowed to do things in, in the city. You need to have like tons of permissions to do it. But since this was a construction site, they already had the permit for the building uh, scaffolding and they all they had, had the permit for all these things. So the only thing I, I did was to use the things they already had the permit for, for rebuilding a, a building. And I changed the, the, the fabric to become a black fabric. I put it up much, much more sharp. So it's in the daytime, it, it looks 
it looks a little bit like a, a, a pastiche of contemporary architecture. And, 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 uh, and in the night time, it, it sort of uh, then first disappears into a black hole, and then, and then, it, uh, and then it, uh, these windows pops in around eight, nine, and then it goes in intervals. Uh, yeah. Also, I should also say that please interrupt me as you hear I'm not that, I don't have a prepared spe speech. So it's interrupt wi me with questions and, and, uh, and so on if you have any. The, I can also mention that the, the, the stories, the, the memories I recorded, each one start with, with uh, I remember. I divided them up in, 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 in almost like chapters. So I collected all the memories which are, are about a city, like a city wanderer in, in one section that comes from one speaker. All the memories that is about uh, like a rural landscape is in one uh, another speaker, all the, or, or is another sequence or another chapter. All the memories which about silence and, and emptiness, it's in one. So I have these, I have like six different chapters. And inside the, the corridor which you can, or you can walk through the house uh, uh, on, the, on the pavement, there, there I have uh, the archive of, or the index of the, film, of, the, of the film. So it's some sort of possibility to understand what, what this is, even though it's, I think uh, if you're just walking there alone on the, I'm, I'm not, uh, it's not obvious what is going on at all. Silver screen, this is a piece uh, which is also about sort of projecting and, 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 and imagine, imagine things, you can say, like an imaginary architecture or an imaginary uh, yeah, something which, which more or less all my works is also happening in your own head. So it's, it's seeing your own seeing. It's, uh, I, I was asked to do uh, or to be in a competition for the Ecosox chamber in the UN building. Uh, they were going to renovate or now it's done. Uh, they were renovating the building and, and uh, the different countries that, that uh, were involved when, when they built the UN building in 53 uh, or 1953 uh, took care of the different spaces that the, they built. And Sweden built, built the Ecosoc chamber then. Four artists were, were, were invited for a competition and, and uh, uh, I come up with an idea or one is supposed that the, the spaces have large windows out to East River facing Brooklyn. And, but the spaces or the whole UN building is, is in glass and the most, most of the spaces is in glass which res or it's gives a nice conceptual idea about the, the work in, in the UN and transparency and so on. But, but the, these spaces, these meeting rooms are all covered. They, they, even though they have glass there and, and they have a killer view of the, of the East River, it's, it's all covered and, and because of security reasons. And, and the, the competition proposal was to, to replace one of these, like a curtain and so on. So that was what uh, we were asked to, 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 to sort of come up with something. Uh, my proposal uh, is was to 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 come up with a, uh, or I proposed to put up a big silver screen, 19 meters long and five meters high. Uh, and my starting point is was that I I didn't want to do something static. I didn't want to 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 do something decorative in that sense. I, I wanted to address time and distance 
as elements necessary in understanding our human condition. And I wanted to address light as a, as a constant reminder on what lay outside in the sh shame, uh, outside the space, like the rest of the world. Uh, my proposal was based on watching a Polaroid photo photograph slowly develop, but the image in my proposal would gradually appear over the course of 15 to 20 years. Instead of using a photographic process, I proposed to create a screen woven from a combination of silver fiber and real silver thread. I devised, uh, devised a way to, to use silver and its oxidi oxidization. And when it comes in contact with air, then it gets black uh, or gets dark. Uh, and it, or it's, yeah. I can, and in, so it's like a, it's a process that from the beginning when you come in here, the idea is that you see a glittering silver, silver surface. Of course, the, the concept will be, be spoken about, the, the, that people will know that something is there, something is hidden, something, it is something that will appear during 50 to 20 years. They don't know, but they will start to project their ideas on what, what, what is in there, what, what it will be. And after a while, slowly, slowly, things will start to appear. And in the end, it's, doesn't, it's not that important what appears. It's the whole idea of, of the, the time that it takes for it to, to appear. And what appears is, is, is very simple, it's, it's just the outside. But when it appears, it's, 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 it's already too late in one way, because this is one of the, on, on the Brooklyn side, it's one of the places where they develop most new buildings. And so, so when you finally can see, uh, see what's outside, it's already changed and too late, which is of course some sort of both to discuss uh, the work with, uh, within UN and, and uh, a lot about uh, to be able to take distance, to, to see something and, 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 uh, and, and uh, yeah, to, to, to see and understand something basically. And, uh, but when, when you do, it's already part of history. It's already past, it's already too late. Uh, as you see, I, I don't show the real images of the real space and my beautiful installation. I lost the competition. <laughs> uh, <laughs> instead, they put up some uh, 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 fabric with triangular shapes on. <laughs> I'm not bitter at all for that. <laughs> but. And this is just a way or to show, I don't even know why I have this, but it's, uh, it's the method of, of how I, you know, how you do it. You pixelate an image and you, you, you it's just like basic, uh, base, it's, so the image is of course in there. It's not the, it's not the polar, it's not something yet developed. It's just reacting on, on the, on the air. It's not reacting on light, which is, <coughs> which is sort of looks like. And here comes, here comes, I go through different works which are, are about around like cities and, 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 uh, and more like both the imaginary city and, 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 and here comes maybe something, a work which is more about the secret city, uh, about the gated community, about uh, the, the version where, where someone decide to be not, it's not, something that are made invisible or, or it's something which by decision has want to be invisible or want to be secret. 
in, in uh, 2009, I was invited to, to, uh, to uh, by an American collector who has, uh, he wanted to produce a work and a new film work. And his space was in, the, in a private club around Gramercy Park. And Gramercy Park is the only, it's a lot of these parks, I don't know how many in London, which are closed parks where, where, where there are private parks. In, uh, on Manhattan, it's, this is the only one which is, which is a private park. And, and around uh, Gramercy Park, it's a lot of, of private clubs, and it's, it's uh, very few public spaces. It's maybe one restaurant or, or something, but it's a lot of, of, of this, and it's a little bit like it's my feeling when coming there, it's like really to walk into the past, or you, you walk into a frozen world almost. They, uh, his space was uh, in the same building as the Nat National Arts Club, which is not really a super contemporary art situation. They have like a gallery for, for pastel painting in, the, in there, which, is, which uh, uh, is probably the only one dedicated to, to pastel in, in the whole world, is my guess. <laughs> and... and uh, I wanted, when, when coming there, I really wanted to, 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 to work with, with that building or with the, with the, the sort of uh, uh, the closeness or me, me not belonging there. I had meetings with, with, the, with the president of the National Arts Club and, and to, to be able to come into the private club and film and photographs in there. Here is the president, and, and uh, next to the real president. And I had long meetings with him, and, and he, he agreed that, okay, it's okay that you can, you can come in and film. The day after our meeting, I, I come with my film equipment, and I, I, walk, I walk over the, 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 the line where it says members only. And when I've d just when I walk over there, I hear, someone shouting uh, like uh, really loud like what are you doing it's a big scandal why you can't just walk in there and I turn around and I see the man I had a meeting with <laughs> and I, I'm stressed as it is because I don't belong in from the I'm in New York I'm 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 in the private club I am in in this sort of in Gramercy Park which is in not a gated community but but has some sort of, of, of qualities uh, similar to one and, 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 and are quite stressed when I see him or, or when I asked him like what, what, what is going on? We had the meeting uh, yesterday, uh, it it's, was all fine. I was allowed to film here and, and, and he started to, to he just continue and, con and continue and continue to really, really trash me. And it sits people in there reading the newspaper. They don't look up. They're just like uh, pretending that that nothing is happening at all. <coughs> and 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 uh, and I get more and more stressed. And and uh, finally, one of the guards comes up and and take me take me to the side and say, "It's his twin brother. It's his twin brother." <laughs> so. So, and this, this guy has had a twin brother. The twin brother was, was uh, not psychologically totally in balance. <laughs> Both of them were by also one or two years after this uh, was uh, got caught by, but they were, were sort of uh, uh, scamming, uh, renting out places to using this space or place for, for many different reasons. But I decided it also gave me the idea on, on what to do here. I wanted to work with this sort of, uh, this closed or, or, or secret place, and I wanted to sort of deal with a with the idea of these twins. So I decided to, to work with, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, two apartments on, on each side of Gramercy Park. I wanted to work with, uh, and I wanted to move the camera from one apartment on one side of the park 
and cross the, the park, which I have either not an access to, I need to have a key to get into the park. So I wanted to just like go from one apartment, cross the park with a camera, like fly over and, and then inside another apartment and then back again. And then just loop this sort of situation. I started to build up the, the space or, or just like to do the different concept sketch on this. And, and moved into to more sort of sculpture ways of, of, of this model. Uh, and, and I wanted to, since I didn't want to work, or I couldn't work there, budget reasons is one reason I can't, I can't just fly through the park. Other reason was that it's, I was extremely uncomfortable in, in the whole situation there and with these two, two twin brothers. So I decided to, to build up uh, a model in in, uh, in a studio in Stockholm of of Gramercy Park of a like a slice from Gramercy Park and this is the like the uh, sketch on that with the people flying I see now yeah <laughs> but it's uh, I wanted to my 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 starting point for for how I wanted the 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 camera movements to be come come again from where it came from, uh, from a film. Uh, so it's The Passenger by, by Antonioni, uh, where in the end of, the, of this end of the film, they do a camera movement in, in which is, I think it's one take, seven minutes. It's uh, Jack Nicholson is, is uh, coming into a hotel room, lie down in, a, in the hotel bed, and the camera just start to, to sl slowly, slowly move in, inside the space and get closer and closer to this window with the iron fence. And, and when it's really close to like on, on number two, uh, you hear like some sort, of, some sort of noise, which could be a moped outside or it could be a gun. Uh, the camera slowly goes goes through the window, magically through the window, turns around and look from the look back on the room from the outside. And, and there you see Jack Nicholson dead on the bed, his wife, his mistress and some police and you have sort of the whole film summed up in one scene. There. So I wanted to, to do I wanted to do use a similar movement in my film where I magically go through the windows and, and sort of so that was my sort of camera or camera movement inspiration. At the same time, I, I started with with some a team of people to build up uh, to build up the space in in a, in a model. Here we are starting to build uh, like trees. We built up some furniture. Uh, we test the grayscale because my idea was that I wanted to do I wanted to do uh, uh, what do you say uh, uh, I wanted to do a co color film of a black and white world. So I wanted to build the whole model in black and white and film it in color. So it's a real color f or like it's a normal film, but it, it displays. Uh, a black and white world, so it looks like a black and white film. It's a lot of, a lot of work to, to do something which no one really sees in the end, but it gives gives some sort of weird weird feeling on on, on this frozen situation because you can see sometimes you see a little bit of color somewhere. I missed the paint somewhere or or, and so on. And here we try just a different or like a, a grayscale. We start to build it up. In, in a studio, which also by, by it's the, the studio I could borrow, which was perfect for this, for this model, was like the old art academy in Stockholm, which is as grand and passé as the National Arts Club is. So I'm, I'm in a, even though I wanted to disappear from it, I was still sort of in a, in a similar situation in Stockholm in this, in this space surrounded by old paintings and, and uh, 
here is when when we start or uh, just when we start or during filming, I think. And here is the film. I will show a little bit of this and be silent for a while. All my films are, are also silent, I could say. I, I and and I never really cut. So it's more like journeys or, or architecture in that sense. It's more like movements in architecture. So I'm not using uh, film in a way to, to help the viewer to focus on what they should look on or to tell a story in that sense. The film is 17 minutes long and it's a loop so it just continues. The, the it's just this gaze between these two apartments which goes back and forth. I can fast forward a little bit, or <coughs> the two apartments are mirrored. So they are, are the same, but it's, it's, uh, but, but mirrored in that sense. So something that are on the right side is on the left side. It becomes a little bit like, it's a similar fee or what I, it's, I thought about it when I made it, that I was interested in doing almost like you're watching at yourself in a mirror and you, you're traveling inside the gaze and you're going inside the mirror and turning around inside the mirror and look out on yourself again. And then after a while you have really no idea what, what is the mirror and what is, what is the real. Of and when, when I go through the park, it's, it's 
basically just I don't do any movement so it's just like a cut through the park and inside the apartments it becomes more like a silent intruder that are walking around and looking and then you sort of jump into the gaze and just like moving over again sorry uh, yeah yes Yeah, or uh, yeah, I used I used uh, some furniture from from uh, from from the national arts clubs. I used different, uh, looked at different in the end. Or from the beginning, I was going to pack the rooms with much more more th stuff because it was also one of the things which was impressive when you were in in that situation. It's that it felt at national art clubs or in that building, it felt like every everything that that have entered that building they it never left so it was packed with stuff and it was and from the outside it looked really posh but when you went in there it was completely cracked and dusty and 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 sort of so it was almost disgusting in that sense or it was to watch death in in a way in, in so it's but the, when i i started to 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 uh, I didn't succeed in, in when you build when you work with models. It's all about abstraction. It's all about uh, in the same way what to focus on and how to to balance it. So it's both obvious and not obvious. It it is uh, a model. It's this to reach some sort of uncanny uncanniness in in the image. And and if you start to pack it too much, it's it's normally it start to look like a model. To it's it's uh, it doesn't function. So I ne I couldn't work with. We had built tons of more stuff that I needed to take out, and it was also quite complicated to to turn around with the camera inside the the, the apartments, which are the, they are just like one meter wide, and and to be able to turn around it, we couldn't have so much furniture in there. And uh, and uh, okay, and then I go. You can see I go out again. Here you also see what is if we go into model making and so on. You see like what becomes when you build a model or or when you work with with a, a model in in. Uh, <coughs> Your traces, my traces when I built it becomes important. My clumsiness becomes, you see glue marks on the window, you see all these stuff which are, are sort of failures becomes what is good. So normally it's like, yeah, I, I, for a while, I, I haven't worked with models now for, for a while and it's also, it's almost to, if I will do it again, I, I, I need to unlearn or, and start to, or start to work with people that new people which are really bad because it, if it becomes too good it doesn't work anymore in that sense it needs to I, I miss the balance yeah normally it's uh, this this has a completely different story also a long story about but normally I keep or ke normally I, I, I we try to place them in a museum so so model and film goes to so I have one edition with model and film in this case, I, I since I did this work for for uh, for this, and it was going to be a show in New York, and I worked with uh, I worked with with uh, we were like five or ten people working on this, and in the middle of this, the 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 guy that invited me to do it stopped paying, and I I sat with like five or ten employees, and and was like and. And I'm an artist. I'm not a big architecture firm. I run out of money like uh, quicker than than <laughs> I don't even know how fast it goes. But it's so it was very stressful the whole situation, and and he he just stopped. Uh, my gallery it was going to be shown during Armory Week, so my gallery still wanted you should keep on doing it anyway, and and we arranged some 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 galleries went in with some some money for the production. And and uh, and uh, uh, we shipped it over. The model was going to, so it's a big container on a boat shipped over. And on the middle of when the when the model is on the middle of Atlantic Ocean, 
the collector just uh, calls me and say I, I cancel the show and 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 then he 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 didn't send back the model so so uh, for for one and a half years the model was uh, stuck in 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 the harbor in New York and and uh, he refused to 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 do anything with it and then I showed the film in in a gallery in my gallery in Stockholm and it got reviewed by Art Forum, which means that he read it. And 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 the day after the the Art Forum came out, I got an email, and they said we released the model. And and uh, and then we we but then it was enormous financial crisis by then, and no one really wanted to pay for the shipment back. So in the end, in this case, we we donated the model to Modern Museum. So Modern Museum paid the, 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 the shipment <laughs> and took it back, so I gave it to them. But, uh, so that's where that model is. <laughs> I have a quick question about the bridge you constructed to film your film. Yeah. Uh, uh, what sort of a camera did you use, and uh, was it sort of something that was motorized that went through useful spaces? No, it's inside, we inside the, the, the rig was going to be a motion control rig from the beginning, but it, the engine, engine caused too much vibrations, so we couldn't use it. So in the end, it's the guy that rented me the equipment. He walks with, with, with it, and he, he was feeling so sort of uh, bad for himself to, 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 to rent out something that didn't work. So he walked with this, with this thing for like two weeks for me. And and uh, to make this smooth, smooth moment and uh, or movements and and, uh, but it's a quite old, big metal construction. Then we hang in the camera with the L shape in the, and then we have like a motion control head. So I, I, but that was all going to be programmed. But when he walked, I couldn't. We couldn't program anything anymore. So in the end, I'm sitting with a, a joystick and, and and watching a monitor inside the apartments. I'm moving the camera with a joystick, just like a computer game. Or, and it was quite good in the end because it becomes like I'm actually looking at uh, at at the uh, at these rooms. And if I would have programmed it, it would have been completely different. But it's also these mistakes. It was nothing that was planned, these things. Yeah. The speed, it's like I, it's all my films, I almost have the same speed. I, I, I am trying to, to, to get a speed which is something something which is not the real m movement from a, from a uh, human being. And it's not really, it's like an in-between, almost like a dream sequence. So that's a, a speed I, I, I normally, I've used the same engine, I, not in this. I bought an engine for my, my degree show at the Art Academy. We had like a budget on 1,000 euros for the whole show. And I spent 800 euros for buying an engine. And, and then I built, <laughs> built with cheap materials the, the, the models which I used. And then I used this engine for probably eight films later, the, and the same kind of speed. I tried, of course, I almost every time I tried to change speed, but I, I always returned to, to the same kind of movements because, or movement, because I, yeah, I, it's, I guess it's my, my speed. <laughs> motion control head is the one I have inside. So that's, that you can find nowadays, you can find it quite cheap. Or, or but uh, it's not so, uh, it's not so uh, complete. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of smaller, these heads that you can, you can move. It's like a, you, like a little robot basically. And, and, uh, okay. Invisible cities. Uh, this work started also, I normally mix like personal history with, with uh, in all my works, it it's deals a lot with myself, which I, I, 
I somehow layered on, on, on to the works. This is, I, I started out as Parveen said, that studying architecture and I still, I still work with architecture and I, 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 for a while I read a lot of architecture theory or architecture or flip through magazines and so on and, and I realized or that it was never, a certain kind of city was really never discussed and that was, and it's, a, it's some sort of in-between city and it's a city where I, I never found my hometown. I never, I never, I grew up in a small town in, in, in Sweden with, uh, with 50,000 people which is still a town, it's, 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 uh, it's big enough so you can spend an entire lifetime in there without need to move, it depends of course if, uh, but you have all, all the necessary thing, it's schools, it's retirement homes, it's you know, maybe not the most funny life, but, 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 uh, but uh, everything necessary to be able to, 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 to stay there. And, 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 Somehow these cities are, are never talked about, they are never mentioned, they are never, they are never really discussed and it's some sort of invisible, invisible cities and, and I started to think about these cities and my idea was from the, like, that, that I thought that it was almost like an invisible power, that it was so many people living there, but they didn't know that they were actually in, in, uh, in power. They were, so I started to do investigations about it and, 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 and uh, collected a lot of, of, uh, of statistics. Uh, and it's, okay. 20 to, to, to 30 percent of the population in the world when I did this 2004 uh, living in cities between and what I counted out it's since it's not any definition of, of what a city is it's it exists so many different uh, definitions of that I, I made my own definition of that the minimum city if I would be which is extremely different in different parts of the world of, of course but it's in, in some parts of the world, a city could be 10,000 and that is a city. In some other parts, maybe that is not even a village in that sense. But I made, I made, I collected all the cities in the world in an, in an index which were between 10 and 100,000 people, uh, 10,000 and 100,000 people. And these are the, the sort of the, like 2,000, 300 years ago, these were the cities which was the ideal cities. Aristoteles talked about these cities at the sort of, and nowadays maybe the ideal city is two to three million people instead to, to get the diversity. I started, I worked together with my brother on, on a book project and, and we worked, we, we started to send out, or I started to send out <coughs> questions to, 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 to different people that, that deals with, uh, with, uh, with urbanism or, or architecture. And, and, uh, and I, since I'm not a scientist, I of course I, I knew what kind of answers I, I wanted. So I asked the questions, I described, what I described was the situation in Sweden and I described <coughs> the city, basically my hometown, and, and, and said does, does this kind of cities exist in your part of the world. And then you get answers from like this Spanish architect saying, for example, no, no, it's in Spain, we don't have any cities like that. And she, she, she counts up like five of the bigger cities and then it's like 40 million people or it's a lot of people missing in, in these cal calculations. So of course it's a lot of, of, uh, of uh, uh, yeah, so the invisible cities start to shape from, from, this, from this sort of ground and I, 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 I uh, made a list, here we have them, all the invisible cities in the world as an index and I made a film where I wanted to go into, a, the invisible cities are just invisible from the outside, 
they are made invisible by the people from the outside. It's my gaze that, that makes them invisible, which means that, that I wanted to make a film where, where I show I show the sort of the I show you your own seeing, which means that it's it's you will see you see a film which where you see something that looks like a ghost town. You don't see any people there, you don't see anything there. So you 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 say that okay, it's a ghost town. It's it's but it's a fully functional city. It's your your sort of as an alien coming into this city and 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 uh, as the as the outsider, basically. And I fly through the city in a in a, in a circle. So I go through all the parts of the city. So I go from from I pass by the the, the different house uh, like. Uh, apartment houses to the city square the train station the shops the the, the a little bit more industrial uh, spaces and so on and i looked for a long time since this was the first time i, I worked with a, like uh, with with making a film in 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 some sort of real situation i looked for a long time to 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 find a city which kind of looked like a model so it becomes so I, I i sort of turned it back so it becomes this this gap again in 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 when you're not really sure if if what you're seeing is 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 real All my films are always also projected on, on I built up spaces for them normally. I, 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 I normally work with, a, with a, the body of the viewer, the movement on the viewer in the exhibition space. I never show them hanging on a screen or something. They are always standing on the floor. It's always, it's always in relation to, to full scale architecture. So, so my interiors are normally b like four to three meters or something like that. This could be bigger. I projected this really big a couple of times in, in large rooms. Do you do much post-production? Sorry? Do you do much post-production? It depends. In, in this, uh, we, we needed to, to uh, but most of my films have no cuts. So it's basically a little bit of color correction and, 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 and uh, View through a park was a bit of post-production because we, we went through the glass and we, so we need, we had cuts, invisible cuts in that uh, in that film. In this case, we we uh, we uh, I needed to to uh, take away uh, the reflection of the camera a couple of times in in, uh, in windows. No, not any people in, in. I saw a car here, which I missed, and everybody missed for, and you probably missed it now also. But one see a car moving in this. But it's a lot of people. Uh, it's like filmed in the middle of the night in the summertime in Sweden. So it's uh, three, three thirty in the morning. <laughs> and and and. Uh, yeah, it comes birds here later. Soon it comes a, a few birds. <laughs> but I had like people like. I had a bunch of drunk people every night that were running after the, the, the truck and they were always so drunk so they never reached it. <laughs> so, and we had a balcony where it sat some teenager and drinking beers every and watch us because we fly so close to the balconies and so on. So they were every day like and I was standing on the, so basically what I, I am doing here is like we have a guy up in a crane with a steady cam, and he sort of messes with the steady cam with his fingertips, so he, he makes it move like uh, lose the balance all the time. And I am standing and watching on a, or or with a walkie-talkie, so I can talk with the guy up in the crane, and I'm looking for people just. So I, if I see someone, I tell him you need to move to to you know you need to film up in the you know. So sometimes he's up in the sky a little bit and. Uh, a car is passing or uh, like a postman is out to deliver the, the, the newspaper or something like that. But it has been, it's in this, I could imagine if someone wakes up in the night and, and 
like in one of these apartments and see this cra crane and the camera guy coming moving in, in this small, small town in Sweden. It's <laughs> All right. Ah, okay. Here, uh, should I continue a little bit, or what do you say? I can. I could quit. It's uh, twenty minutes to seven, Tw to eight. I can flip through very quick a couple of. Uh, and perhaps if people have questions, they'll ask them as you proceed. Yeah. There won't be time afterwards. This is the opera set, which I also did in, 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 uh, in black and white, which was one of the, when I, I started to work with opera uh, as a set designer, one of the things when the director, I was not used to work in this situation, and we had meetings in the beginning with the, with the, the whole team, the director, the, the light person, the, and we started to read the play, which was Macbeth, and, 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 uh, and since I'm not too used to work like that, they work in a, they, they normally work when they are meeting. And I'm really not used to work. I'm used to work like first inside my head and think for a long time. And then, and then before I start to deal with any other persons, then I've thought for a long time. And in this case, we, we were, we were uh, uh, sitting all together. And one of the first things I said just to be able to say something was, you know, let's do it. And, and I also thought that they would be like more like a film director, the director of an opera, I thought, would be much more sort of involved in, the, in, in what kind of, what way he wanted to tell the story. But as a set designer, for I was asked to basically, I could tell, I, I had much more power than I thought. So when they asked me, so what do you think, do you have any ideas? I just throw out my old sort of, let's do it in black and white because it fits quite well to the, to the whole idea of, of to do it. And it's also quite nice in an opera where it's, they are so used to work with colorful things and so on. And, it, and they all was like, yes. And I was like, oops. <laughs> and, and, uh, and it created like an enormous problem for everybody. The light designer to light it all black and white. The, the, the mask people to do it, the, you know, the mask for 100 people which was on stage in black and white. The clothes which, which needed to be tested in, in a little uh, lab to, 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 to make so, so they can see that it was black and white in the light, when in different lights. And here you see that you see a little bit of color on, on Lady Macbeth in the so you see a little bit on, on some on some you will see more. Here you see a little bit more when it's lots of people because the mask people that work are are, are not used to to uh, to, to be so precise on 100 people, they focus on the main, main singers and then they, 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 they but here they needed to, to deal with so many people. My idea was to, what I, I gave the director also as an idea was to, instead of following the, following the play when they are out in a big open field and, and so on, I, I, I proposed that we should just be on, on, on in one room and, and uh, which basically is inside Macbeth's head, and, and, and work with the psychological space where, where I changed the room like with, with shadows. So, so I wanted to, to sort of bring in nature into, into this space and, and, uh, and sort of abstract the space with, 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 uh, with shadows and make it more and more abstract. Uh, that was one of the things which, which was very difficult for me to explain because I couldn't show it for him. I couldn't show the director what I meant because it's, I, you know, you need to work. I, I did little sketches, but he needs to see it for real. So in the end, this, this, uh, the shadows are in there and they come in the, in the end quite intense, but my concept with the shadows never really got, got as strong as I wanted it because he never really understood. We did, me and the light design did a sketch when we were worked alone in the, during the rehearsals and, and make uh, like a killer, killer sketch for, for, uh, for it, but it, that never turned up there.
I see if I have no, I have no shadow, shadows in there. But it's, it's, I, I was not so happy with how they looked in the end also. So what I did during, during this time when I worked with, uh, with opera, I did, I did my own film also. But I can, I can, since I will see here, we can just give a little. So I did a film where I wanted to, 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 to sort of be more true to my concept with shadows and keep it in just one space. And this is called Shadow Room. It was from the beginning called Macbeth also, but it became really complicated for me to explain this and also to, to explain for people what, what this has to do with Macbeth. And, and the space comes from, from, uh, from uh, nostalgia, Tarkovsky's nostalgia. So it's, I, I have sort of built up that space in a model with some changes and the references to sh shadows and so on, I used like Dreyer and uh, like from, from the 30s where, where they do. So I, I do some, like a surveillance camera is the, the camera is panning back and forth and then I, I, I take in sort of elements of nature of shadows. I wanted to I wanted to try to work more like an like a narrative room almost that it's that it's uh, that it has a story in itself a, a, a space which which tells a story. I do a little fast forward again. A new turn. So here it becomes more and more abstract. And final round. Yeah, this is this is a model, and then I, I filmed the I filmed trees outside my studio. I made the the film of the trees uh, black and white. I I uh, I. Uh, I uh, 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 projected them into the pro with a projector, made, made the projector a little bit unsharp, unfocused, you missed the focus, so then it becomes blurry and looked like shadow. So it's all in also one take, no real editing. So almost none of my films are edited in that sense. So it's just like, uh, almost like watching a performance. Of You think I'm wasting my time? I came for a talk here that Fabiano arranged a few weeks ago, and someone was doing completely different work, but also doing something that sometimes happens with digital technology, but in a very convoluted analog way. And it's an interesting position. I mean, maybe it's a question for Fabiano. <laughs> yeah, uh, Parveen has been very involved in, in uh, like also with <laughs> Thomas Demand and, and, and so on, but it's, it's like for me it's like, 
for, for me, it's, what can I say? It's, for me, it's the reason why I, I, I work with models is uh, yeah, it's to create this gap. It's to, to make, it's, I, I'm not, when I work with, 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 normally I built up, I also create them in, in the computer first and I check the lights. I, I have all that program working. I even do light tests and so on in computer and then I, I built it. And it's when I built it, it's then my mistakes start starts to happen. And that's what, what sort of, I think, makes, makes it work in a, in a sense. And, uh, and, and, and also focus, it makes me focus on, on, you need to abstract it in a different way than, than you can, or at least I, I'm not capable of, of working so good with the, with the, with the, with the 3D program, so I, so I am, so I can abstract it in that way and make make this sort of gaps happen. But it's in the end, it's like I, I, I had a talk at Archie Zoom in Lausanne at the at the at the uh, architecture school there and talked a lot about models because I, I did a show there with where I just show like my model films, and and and. And it's quite, uh, for me, it's, it's, I'm sort of done with it in one way. So it's, it's hard for me to, to go, go into that mode again when, when I, I start to deal with the models in that sense. But it's, I think it's interesting of because of the abstraction. I think it's interesting in, in, in terms of that it becomes almost like a voodoo doll. You have like total control of it. So it's 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 uh, so you as a and it's in a in a in a different way than you have in in the computer graphics or or in that sense. I, it's it's not really a good answer, but. I'm sure when I when I had when I had the talk in Lausanne, I, I I was sort of arguing for making things in the computer instead. But but uh, but it was also because I think that it's also what kind of tool you are good in. In in the end, I think that if you're really really good, if you grew up with 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 working with computers, then you're also that tool. It becomes a tool where where you also are so good, so you uh, so the mistakes happens. So it becomes like this natural sort of process of abstraction and, and, and working with this in, in but I, I am extremely handicapped when it comes to this, uh, uh, yeah, when it comes to, but it's, yeah. And it's also, it's like, I work with like one or two or five lamps in a model, you know, and, and if you work in a computer, suddenly you can put in like 2000 lamps. You, you have like no limitations and the, the that, that is also it's not so good for me in in that sense the the sort of the the the, the sort of lack of limitations yeah 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 we can maybe turn on the light a little bit or are there questions from anybody else in the back i'm sorry if you couldn't hear Toby speaking. Yeah, um, I observed that in all your work except the opera, there is no people or um, any sort of living uh, being or behaviors and movement of that sort. So I was wondering whether it has influenced the way you worked on the opera where there were <coughs> people or what's changed in the way you worked or thought about your work? Yeah, I, I don't know. It's like for, for me, the, the reason why it's I have no people in or, or it's that I, I really I really look at my, my work as mirrors for, for like a psychological mirror for, your, for, your, for the person who looks at it. 
So it's the idea is always about that the, the projected image becomes your projection of, of, of these spaces. I, I, I normally use these, these uh, uh, spaces which I, I, I very rarely construct like the space myself in that sense that I invent the architecture. I normally use an already existing space to link the viewer into that space. And, and, and uh, I quite like that, that it's, I, I don't like to tell stories. So in, in that sense, it's like, I don't think that the opera changed me in, in terms of, because then it's storytelling, it's people, and people are, it makes, for me, it makes the viewer passive in that sense. You're looking at someone rather than, you can identify a little bit, but it's very, very, easy for you to to jump out from that identification and just and just look on something and and the importance for me has always been that the, the viewer it's all about your own seeing so so uh, could i connect that to your collecting of the uh kind of fantasy or dream um images of that you you began with where everybody is saying, I remember. Yeah. And so there is only one subject, and it's the first person. Yeah. Yeah, that is, of course, I, 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 I did, I had, I st it becomes some sort of, what can I say, it becomes, uh, uh, I got in all these stories, and, and since I asked people to, 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 to write me quite fast, and, and not really, I wanted them to be spontaneous, to also, to not filter things. And that means that the, the, the writing was quite bad, basically. And, and so, so then I started for a while, I rewrote everything. I started, and then it was in the end, it was I, I didn't rewrite all the memories, but I started to rewrite a few of them and, and sort of took away more and more of the people. So I made them my own again. And, and, and which was, of course, quite stupid. The whole idea was to that I was also tired of myself a little bit in that sense. But then I, I, I to, keep, to keep the voices, and this is, I never really figured out a better way to do it. And, I, and then I wanted to, to sort of do a, uh, the link is to, or my reference to that is the, the what's, uh, now I, I missed the, what is the French writer that made a book which is called I Remember. Uh, pop, pop, pop. Ah, whatever he wrote the book, so that is my reference. Why I started to 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 make all of them in in first person, that it's like I remember, and then and then it becomes otherwise it becomes really really weird how to work with the language basically, and and which person to write in, and and if you. So that was the best, uh, or the, the one the thing I. I what worked best. Um, I think it's in a way not enough to <coughs> distinguish between the digital and the kind of analog because it seems to me before you kind of make that comparison you have to take into account uh, that what's at stake here um, is miniaturization. Uh, and, and it seems to me there are characteristics of miniaturization which are independent of whether they're digital or kind of analog. One is the kind of mysterious link uh, between um, miniaturization and the secret. Uh, I mean, it surely m people must have thought during your presentation that there is a sort of link here uh, not explicit but, but between uh, what you've fabricated and, and aspects of the doll's house which seem to themselves to harbor the secret. Mm -hmm. um, indeed I think there's, there's, there's something also to be said in the same vein uh, about the kind of sectional 
kind of uh, character of the shot. Um, and in a way that miniaturization, either in the doll's house or in kind of Victorian memorabilia, uh, because the accuracy of uh, the transfer of all the detail um, becomes just excessive, the, the model inevitably takes on a kind of slightly uh, more generic mm -hmm. character, although it's a kind of uncanny genericism. I mean, I, I don't know quite how to justify that. So it's, you know, I mean, above all, it seems to me we, we, we shouldn't always move to global accounts of the effects the analog and the digital before you've kind of exhausted those other issues, which I think is so important in, in your work. Yeah, that's true. Thanks. Hi. Um, you have spoken about the link. Must I? So you have spoken about the link with the person, right? And that you need to create a story for the person in itself. Um, in two of your films, I've seen that you, um, well, option for a camera to be put above the human perspective. Why is that? Like, if you really want to create a human uh, experience, why did you just lift it up? Like, that is not exactly a human experience, if you know what I mean. I'm, I'm not looking for reality, though. Okay, good. So it's a, it's a human experience, it is, because it becomes that in, in, in the space where you are standing on the floor in the room where you are in for the moment where the work is shown. And, and the projection of, of, for example, the idea with invisible cities where you're flying is that you, you actually lose the contact with your own body. You feel, start to feel sick after a while. So it becomes a very physical, uh, physical experience of, of not having contact, being weightless in, in, in a certain way. So it is about the, the, the person in that sense, but it's not about maybe to, to, to give uh, a personal view of someone walking or none of them is to identify us as, as as a sort of that kind of reality in that sense uh, Mark would like to say a few words okay um, as <coughs> Pavin indicated uh, we've been able to to kind of run and fund uh, these lectures for very nearly 10 years. Um, they've been funded in a sense uh, um, ostensibly through the London Consortium uh, which would give money to the AA to put these on as part of its kind of thank you to the AA for kind of uh, allowing us to have the London Consortium. Now, uh, I see several people here indeed um, from the London Consortium. Uh, the London Consortium um, has collapsed um, and uh, um, before I actually sign uh, the contract about dissolution for the AA, which has all these non-disclosure uh, <laughs> clauses in them. I did actually see the, a couple of weeks ago the Pope signing something before he resigned. And I thought, the man's never going to be able to go to confession again because he's going to have to keep saying to God, I'm sorry, that's covered by the non-disclosure agreement. 
anyway, before I sign it, may I just say, may they rot in hell. Um, <laughs> and they behaved in a disgusting and criminal fashion. Uh, we think there's a great value in having an art series in an architecture school. Um, uh, and this, to me, becomes more evident every day. Uh, I, I can't uh, give reasons for it, um, but for decades, uh, Parveen and I have usually spent Saturday morning going around galleries, and I think it's fair to say that 20 years ago, or a bit more, in the morning, one would see about 30 or 40 AA students or staff um, now, actually, you know, it's rare to see anybody. And I think probably many people here uh, bitterly lament what you might call the serious relationship between art and architecture. I don't just mean that, as it were, architects might express a lot of interest in successful artists. I mean, having a detailed knowledge and interest uh, in what is happening. So I hope that at the very least we can rely upon your support as this coming year we try, we shall have to try uh, to raise money uh, for these talks. Uh, the AA has always been extremely hospitable and generous in providing us uh, with the space and goodwill and administrative help uh, to put it on. It can't be actually expected out of its budget to kind of pay for it. Uh, so if you have any relatives who've just won the lottery, <laughs> uh, Please email us. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Jonas, uh, I thank you. That was obviously very, very successful. Thank you. Thank you.